everyone, how you guys doing? Hope you're going to have an awesome day today. Over to you, if you have already queued to me, if you ever hit that like and subscribe. But while you had to go ahead and push the bell for notifications, also, you can get to scoop my news upcoming videos. All right, so this is going to be a recap video of The Flash Season 9, Episode 10. And wow, one hell of an episode this was. This was actually pretty interesting and pretty cool. We got to see the lore of the story. You guys ready? It's time for the recap. All right, so first off, we see we hear music and we see these flowers, but it's inside the loft of Barry and Iris' place. But no, we hear and see a different protagonist, different character. All of a sudden, it's walking inside a laboratory factory and it's Eddie Thon. Wow. Okay, this is getting a little interesting. So it's a new world, basically. I have no idea what's going to happen. This is part one reunions. Maybe something happened with Ramsey. I don't know. But we do see on the news report that Allegra is making the news. So Chester is actually helping Allegra get a new outfit. But this outfit isn't really working out for her. Yeah, maybe he needs to fix on a different one. Back in the old house in the country, we see Joe in his new house. Joe and Cecile. Yes, it's like Saturday or Sunday for them. Joe's preparing a big meal for them. He always prepares a big meal every time Cecile comes. And so they're going to have fun, enjoy the lives. And yeah, that's what's going to happen for now for the rest of the seasons. Now, as for the loft, this is actually a different area. This is actually Caitlin's house. Yeah, Caitlin's house. And then all of a sudden, we see something traveling underneath the door, and then it's phasing up. It's molecules coming up together. Well, I suppose you could say it's mist and frost molecules, and it's Keon. Yeah, Keon. So she heads over to a desk, and I guess she's writing inside a diary to Caitlin and Frost about her days and what is exactly going on in her life. So right now, Barry is actually putting up some meta dampeners. The reason why he's putting up some meta dampers is because he's saying with Nora actually used her speed force and runs into something hurts her. So I say Iris is about six to seven months pregnant and she gets a award, Academy Award for an article and they're actually happy about that. Then something happens to Barry, yes. Uh, some blue effect happens to him and all his molecules and systems forces him to disappear into thin air. And Iris is shocked and we have no idea what just happened. Barry basically teleported. And so he's outside. So I was thinking, okay, he must teleport it outside of the loft. But no, not only did he teleport it outside a building, but... You saw a CD player. Now, I'm not sure if you guys know what a CD player is, but wow, a CD player, is, that is old. So, Eric, Barry stumbles across the license plate and sees 2000. Yes, he knows exactly what time period he's from. He is in the year 2000 right now as we speak. So, He's trying to open up a portal, a time portal where he could go back into his time. But when he opens his portal, it sucks him in, but it throws him back out. And he lands back inside a moving truck. It's kind of like in season one, what happened to him when he first started out using speed force powers. So he goes to CCPD. He sees Captain Singh, but it's actually a detective scene at this point right here. And Barry's asking Detective Singh, I need to see Joe West. Is he here? And Joe, uh, it's Detective Joe right here, and Barry talks to him and says that uh, I need your help. Everyone says that if there's any danger or trouble, I should come to you. You're the guy who needs some help. Barry is saying that, I'm sorry, I cannot tell you my name, but I'm very in trouble. I'm lost. The only person that can help me is Dr. McGee. So can you go on the Central City database and search her up? And Joe said, what now? central um database i don't understand and barry says oh yeah right that's two years from now that's when they have the central city database system he says that she might be still in the ulterior system which means you could look her up on the internet try to get her a phone call and joe says okay you seem like a good kid you're lost at least tell me your name when barry was about to say his name he looked at the calendar march 18th 2000 that is when his mother dies. 
by the hands of the reverse flash. Yes. And he knows that at this day, at night, that's when it happens. His mother gets killed. And he has goosebumps. And he immediately runs out of CCPD. He tries to call Dr. Stein and says that my name is Barry Allen. I'm from the future. Stein doesn't believe him. He thinks it's a prank. But Barry sees across the street his parents. Yeah. He sees his parents just having coffee and they're out there together. Barry's crossing the street, but he gets sidewiped by someone. I really think that this was Ibarthon just running by and he flips Barry all over into the middle of the street. Once Barry's lying in the street, he's actually kind of like knocked out basically. Then his parents actually come over and help him out, call 911, and they eventually take him to medical facility the hospital basically and barry says what am i doing here i should not be here or my clothes i need to get my clothes and then he sees his mother and then they said that well you look like you've been in an accident we want to take you out at least for dinner let me help you out and so he says okay joel comes to sing and says that you know there's this kid that was in trouble maybe this accident right here was part of it then joe hears something from a crystal light calling his name he picks it up and his eyes glow like i'm like okay is this cobalt blue or something is cobalt blue possessing joe and joe picks it up and puts it inside his pocket and then joe ends up walking away now barry already had dinner and pizza with his parents and he says his name is bart that's what he calls himself they say you should spend a night and barry walks out he says no i'm sorry i can't Barry speeds away somewhere else, and then there he sees, and he hears a voice. Yes, the man of the hour, E. Barthon, the real E. Barthon from season one, actually. Now, is E. Barthon, Barry is saying that, so you're behind this. You are the one behind this at all times. I'm stuck in the year 2000. Why'd you bring me here in the year 2000? And you know what? I had enough of this. Barry was literally about to kill him, and Thon, he does not care at all. Thon grabs Barry's vibrating hand and says, You know what, Barry? I see in your eyes. Do it. Stick your hand inside my chest. Now, Barry backs away, and Thon compliments him and says, Yes, yes, yes. The Flash. Barry Allen, always the hero, always will be. So, question is... What are you doing in the year 2000? Barry's kind of confused a little bit. He thought it was Thon that sent him here. He's still a little suspicious that Thon was the one behind all this. And Thon is taunting Barry says, How does it feel, Flash? Can't tell your parents who you are, who you really are. And you can't get the love from them. And you know what's going to happen tonight. So Thon actually takes Barry out to the bar and has some beer with them. Barry doesn't touch a beer at all. Anyways, beer doesn't really affect him. Some reason why Don, Don could taste the beer and it's, uh, I guess his, I don't know, he has some different abilities um, with his side, his potassium. Anyways, other than that, Don says, I want you to say the words, Barry. And Barry says the words, you win. You win, Don, you want to hear that? And then Don says, you know what? There's two things you could do. You could either stop me from killing your younger self, but you'll be creating a time paradox. The second option is, well, you could send me to Black Gate right now. But you know what happens right there. It's going to create another time paradox. So what's it going to be, Flash? You know what's going to happen tonight. I will kill you. And when I kill you, it's going to be satisfying. And so Don says to Barry before he walks away, you can't do anything about it, Barry. The future's already set. Barry already knows the truth and what he's going to do. So his parents are actually worried about Bart. And Bart comes to them and says that, yeah, I'm sorry, I walked away. It's just that it's my parents. When they pass away, I wish I had something to say to them. And Nora said, won't you tell us? Maybe it'll make you feel better. And he did. Then Barry hears an eerie noise. And it came from Joe. And Joe says, I know why you're here, son. And immediately, Barry says, okay, this is why I'm stuck here at this time. And then all of a sudden, Barry 
gets this feeling that it's not really Joe. And it's not Joe. It's someone else completely different. And Barry says that, so you're the new negative force avatar. You're the one who's here doing all this ma'am chaos. And no, this protagonist says, I am not the new idol of the negative speed force. You killed the idol of the negative speed force. And Barry says, okay, you want to fight? You want to go? Well, bring it on. And then he zaps Barry. I think this is a lightning bolt. He lightning bolts Barry right through a wall. Yes, he's very powerful. I think this is Cobalt Blue's powers. He's possessing Joe as we speak. And the hospital feels the vibrations of what's going on. And so this evil Joe is saying that you can't stop me. You cannot win Flash. The reason why you can't win is because I'm possessing this body. Joe is stuck in this body, but there's nothing you could do. You try to hurt me, you hurt Joe. CCPD is uh, in the hospital building, so it's going to be up to Barry and Evil Joe. What they're going to do is they're going to play a little game called Who's the Best Person at Throwing Lightning? Yeah, all they did in this scene was throw lightning at each other. Proving who's the best, who could get who down. And it was actually intimidating. Um, the evil Joe was about to actually kill J Barry. But Barry is super strong and powerful. He, I guess you could say, counteracts his uh, powers and forces it off of him. And knocks Joe out, basically. He takes away his crystal. And the crystal disappears. Scene comes in, but Barry rushes joe back to his police car and yeah joe's like okay why the hell am i back in the police car what's going on he's confused but at least he's not possessed anymore so barry comes to see don and don says whoa 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 barry it's good to see you. what have you come to see your demise and barry says no i'm here to save you don and don says you're here to save me this is a joke why are you actually really here? You're only here to save yourself, but you know what's going to happen. You know the alternative, what the outcome will be. Barry's trying to tell him that you're going to lose Thon. If you try to do this situation and if you prolong it and actually proceed with it, you're going to lose big time in life. Thon doesn't care. He ends up inevitably goes inside Barry's house and, well, blows were actually hidden. We got to see the full fight of the Flash and Reverse Flash inside the house. The night where Barry's mother died. It was crazy, insane. Then we saw a uh, Flash from Season 1 that came out. And Barry saw his um, older self 8 years ago. And he tells him, like, don't come out. Don't stop this at all. And so Barry actually rushes his younger self out of the house. And yes, that's when, well, we didn't really see the part where Thawne killed his mother. It basically went to a black screen and we just saw the house. Now, as soon as Thawne was running, Thawne tripped and fell and he lost his speed for sparse. He caught up to Gideon and says, Gideon, what's going on? And she says, your speed for sparse is depilitated. You can't run anymore. Barry says, I warned you. And Don says, this is a paradox, isn't it? Because my consequences, you knew about this. And then Barry says, yep. But Barry actually teleported him once again. And this is weird. He disappears. Now, this is where Don's, I guess you could say, his uh, beginning came out. Then we see Eddie Don inside his uh, laboratory. He sees that there's lightning coming out of her everywhere and then he gets zapped by lightning it's like the exact same thing that happened to barry in ccpd's laboratory except eddie is strong enough to get back up and not stay in a coma then he turns around and sees a file on the floor like someone delivered it to him gave him powers and delivered a file he reads and says detective eddie thon he says who is this eddie thon so he sees this is a police officer and now we know that this protagonist is not Eddie Thawne. This is someone else. Something else. Can't wait to see what happens in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys are new, subscribe to channels. And yes, of course, I'll see you all in the next one.